it's day one. Uh, today I went into my health center um, for injection training and for my first injection of testosterone. Um, it was the same experience with arriving there as normal. Um, I had to remember to bring my prescription with me that I had already picked up. Uh, and it was in my backpack ready to go. Um, I was taken in um, normally where I sat in the waiting room and then um, they weighed me and got my blood pressure again um, and I sat in the exam room and the nurse came in who was the same nurse who drew my blood um, about a week ago um, for the initial blood level test um, and uh, she looked at what the pharmacy had given me, um, which I actually have right here on my desk, um, and what I had gotten was, I'm going to cover up the information, um, was the little one milliliter of testosterone, uh, and when I first got this, I was so excited to see it, and I opened it up, um, and there's all of the... Um, information of side effects and legal stuff um, and I was shocked at just how incredibly small the bottle is um, but it's only a milliliter so it is very tiny um, and there was a little red cap over it um, which is for sanitary reasons but every time you use it you do 15 seconds of an alcohol rub to make sure it's completely sterile um, and she took a look at the needles and the syringes that they had given me, and um, the needles themselves came in a tube, and they are all packaged in there. Um, and the gauge of the needles um, is what they have to look at, which is 22 gauge, or I believe I'm reading that right, um, called BD needles. Um, and they screw into the syringe, so there's no chance of them, like, the needles ejecting from the syringe because of the pressure inside of the syringe when you draw back the fluid or the testosterone. Um, which, an example of those kinds would be this, um, these free pack of needles which they uh, gave me, um, I think because they were just trying to get rid of them. Uh, it says not for resale, complimentary sample, uh, and it's 10 needles uh, for insulin. Um, and she took a look at these and said, um, these are useless to you, um, you should just leave everything on them and return them the next time you're back at the pharmacy. Um, and that's a shame because it'd be great if I could use these, they're 31G, 31 gauge, so they're also like a different, um, they're thinner I believe, and I need a thicker needle, uh, because the fluid inside of the or the fluid that the testosterone, the hormone, comes in is very viscous, so it needs a thicker needle to get through. Um, and so next time I get my prescription, I will just say, I'm sorry, I couldn't use these. I hope you're able to use them. I haven't opened them or touched them. Um, and that's all that came in the bag of goodies. Um, so we didn't touch the needles that I would be using. Um, and she provided a syringe that would go with the needles that uh, do work for my hormone. Um, and of course she opened up and on Captain um, talked about uh, exactly how much of the uh, fluid to draw back in. Um, so she laid everything out first and she said this is how you're going to go through it on your own and how I'm going to do it and walk through it with her and the next time I get the injection. Um, and. Um, the prescription also came with, um, three, not one, but three of these, um, multiple page little booklets of, um, testosterone, um, the medication, the directions, important information, common brand names, uses, how to use it, side effects and precautions, um, drug information, notes about overdose, um, which is just, you know, call 911, uh, notes on this, like do not share this medication, um, if you miss a dose, and the storage information for it. Um, and I was shocked to get three of them, that seemed a little excessive, um, uh, but they wanted to be sure, because like also inside of the container was another one that had all this information on it as well, um, but I am certainly not misinformed in any way, 
or is no lack of information available to me. Um, so like I was saying, the nurse laid out uh, everything. She laid out the syringe, which the needle gets attached to. Um, she laid out little alcohol wipes and she laid out the band-aid. She said, you gotta have the band-aid ready because there's gonna be a little bit of blood and you're gonna wanna slap it on there as soon as possible. Um, because the needle is thicker, so there's more of a risk of you bleeding. Just a little bit, you know. It's it's something you can't really help with a needle that size and where the injection site is. Um, so she got the syringe out uh, and she opened up. I got six of these, so there's five left in here. Um, one of the little packets that they come in. So that's what they look like. Oop, just tore one off. Um... And they're already covered, so you don't have to worry about poking yourself with it when you're unwrapping it. Um, and then you can leave the cover on the needle uh, and you spin it into the syringe. Um, and then she said the next thing you want to do is take out the little bottle um, and then undo an alcohol wipe and you rub against the top of the bottle for 15 seconds um, to give completely sterile environment to where you're going to be putting a needle which is then going to go into your body um, and then you would get rid of the alcohol wipe, you'd set the bottle down, you would uncap the needle of the syringe um, and you would measure it to 0.25 milliliters which is where I am um, and then you would put it into the little bottle and then you push that air into the bottle and that creates like a, a pressure a vacuum inside of the little bottle, um, turn it upside down, and then you just kind of very gently let the syringe fill because you've pushed air into it, so it's got to come out somehow and it comes out into the needle. I thought that was so cool, like I never knew how that exactly worked. Um, and so physics is on your side to help fill up the syringe, um, and then it, once it stopped filling, um, you just um, gently pushed back in any air. You do not want to inject any air into your body. It is very bad for you. Um, and then slowly draw the needle out. Um, and then you can do it beforehand or you can do it um, at this step or you can recap the needle if you need to. It's not suggested you recap the needle because the less stuff that comes in contact with the needle the more sterile it, it stays. Um, you would be sitting when you would inject yourself. Um, you would have your pants down or pants off. Um, I wore some loose pants that day. I just drew them down to my knees and I sat on the little paper exam table. Um, and you alcohol swab there for about 10-15 seconds. Um, and she showed me how on my leg to locate the quadricep. You have like the midline of your thigh and you kind of just put your hand there and you just kind of pull over a little bit to help keep the skin taut and make sure that the muscle is coming up to the surface so you pull away any body fat that's in between your muscle and your the surface of your skin. Um, and then she did it for me because I had no idea what I was doing, so this was to learn it the first time. Um, she came up beside me um, and stuck it in. And I, you saw the length of these needles, they're about, they're about that long, they're about a little over an inch. And I was ready for the whole thing to go into my leg and I was pretty scared. Like, I have no problem with needles, but like, that's a lot of needle to deal with and it's a thick needle. Um, and to my surprise, she put it in about this far, about a quarter of an inch. And I was like, did she mess up? Like, that's it? That's as far in as it goes? Um, and she put it in. She said, from here, you're just going to push uh, straight straight down on the syringe. And she did. And then she drew it out. And I was a little surprised to see that some of the fluid, um, some of the clear hormone was coming out of it. And she says, it's okay. Like, a little bit will come out. It is negligible. Um, especially because of the size of the hole that you're making. It may come back out. Um, and she just put the band-aid over there. Um, on my leg, and it was a bright orange band-aid, which is wonderful, it's one of my school's colors. Um, and you could pull your pants up, um, because she took care of the needle, but then during this time, I would be, uh, capping the needle, and then disposing of it in a sharps container, which they're going to provide to me. Um, it's important to use sharps containers, um, because it's not... It's, it's not biomedical waste when it's come in contact with blood, it's biohazardous. Um, you do not want your roommate taking out the garbage and your needle sticks them. Um, even though I'm confident I carry no bloodborne pathogens, it is just not a good idea to have needles in regular garbage. Um, the safety of a sharps container is something I certainly wish to have and 
I'll certainly like looking at it. I'll probably keep it underneath or on top of my desk to remind myself, you know, of how far I've come. Kind of like a little, I don't know, like a little plaque that says I've gone there. That's what it represents for me. Um, and also safety, which is good. Um, and then you uh, would just put your everything away, recap everything, bottle everything back up. I keep it still in the little like paper bag that they've given to me. Um, everything fits in there really nicely and I just keep that up on my desk um, and the next time I'm going to uh, which is gonna be in, in two weeks I believe it's November 8th um, I'm going to show up with all of that stuff again the same nurse is going to see me I'm going to walk through it with her I'm gonna talk to it I'm gonna do doing everything myself the sanitization the prep the band-aid the injection especially I have never uh, luckily had to inject anyone with anything, um, um, drugs or illegal or legal otherwise, like I've never had to use an EpiPen on someone, I'm uh, not sure like the pressure it's gonna take to get through my skin, I'm really scared of messing up because like then the needle's like messed up and you're gonna have to like go through it all again or you've wasted the hormone, but I think it's gonna be fine, I really think it's gonna be fine, I think I'm like hyping up my head, like it's just gonna go into my skin, I'm just gonna inject it, pull it out, band-aid, that's the worst of it, right? Um, and then from then on, it'll be up to me to inject myself and keep up with my schedule. And of course, use this responsibly. Um, and it was really great to feel the band-aid on my leg. And it's pretty sore um, where the injection site was. Uh, because that little band-aid just kept reminding me that like it's real. Like it's happening. It's finally happening. The transition's beginning, and it's like a sweet little secret. I get to feel on my leg like it's starting. Um, and, um, yeah, that's about it for, like, the official day one of being on hormones. Like, the real day one. It's in my bloodstream, it's in my leg, it's, it's not a lot, it's an incredibly small dose. The doctor that I talked to says that, um... Other clinics usually start with a medium to high dose and then go lower or higher based off of that. Um, I'm very glad that she uh, prefers to start low dose and go high um, because that seems like the logic that normally you would follow with introducing a new medicine to your body is you would start low and go high. Uh, it also reduces, um, you know more mental effects, like suddenly you're having mood swings, suddenly you're having all this energy, suddenly your appetite, it's more of a gradual introduction of it. Um, I have also started, uh, I have an alarm on my phone for every day at 6 p.m. I'm going to try and remember to take a picture of my face. Um, it really, I don't think I'm gonna see many changes uh, for a while um, because this dose is so small. It is, like I said, a quarter of a milliliter you saw how tiny that bottle was. It's like that much fluid. Um, twice, or two, two, once every two weeks, once every 14 days. Um, once a fortnight, you would say. Um, and for it to build up in my body to get used to it, I don't know. I don't know how long it's going to take. A month? More than a month? Two months? Three months? Um, but we'll see. So... That's, this is officially like day one. Day one of the rest of my life with this hormone, with injecting myself, with living my best life. All right, I hope you enjoyed watching or hearing about what the first time is like and how learning to stick yourself in the leg goes. Um, I'll see you later.